Hey, Ryan from r, &R Rudders. I'm gonna do a little install kit for you so you can see what it looks like on a Minnesota 2, which we have a video of already, and what it looks like on an aluminum canoe. So to start with, this is what the kit's gonna come like. It's gonna come with the pedals, the bracket, the rudder housing, a little bag of goodies, and a rudder blade. Our suggestion is you start in the back by installing the housing and the bracket on the back of the canoe. Start with the bracket, you will set the back, bracket on the back, you will drill one of the holes front or back, put your nut and bolt in it to hold it in place, and then you will stand back and line up the housing with the blade. It's important that this runs vertical all the way down. A lot of times I eye this corner with the bow of the boat and the bottom of the rudder blade to make sure that it is completely vertical and square. After you know you have that, you drill your second bolt and install that. Then you'll put your top bolts in. On most boat, boats, it comes with this little bolt, which goes in the top, but this is an aluminum. Therefore, it gets a little bit different setup. And we use these self-tapping screws and they screw right into the aluminum. Just like that. Once that's installed, tighten your bolt down. It should just come very flush on the bottom with the threads just coming through. There's three spacers in here. You can arrange it in any order you want, depending on your canoe, to gain a little height and move it up and down. After that, we'll come up to our little P-clips that we install. You're going to get a bunch of these in a baggie with some more self-tapping screws. On this one, since it's aluminum and it's a little different, we ended up getting extras of these and bolting these on just because of the design of the boat. You'll run three of these, one behind the seat, one just in front of the seat, and then one about a foot forward of the seat. After you have that done, we come to the pedals. You'll remove your foot brace, which the foot brace is going to use the exact same bolt and the exact same nut as we use in the back of the boat. And then we will slide our foot brace out. We will slide our pedal on with this clamp in the middle. And that allows you to tighten it like this one is already. And you can loosen this to move the foot pedal in or out depending on where you want it. The kits will come with an extension tube like this one here. So when this pedal is sitting on here and you have it further out, the pedal doesn't sit sideways. There's also an option to buy a upgraded tube, which is a longer tube, which eliminates this extension tube. You will run your line through here. This is a simple in and out, in through the top, back through the second, then in the bottom. And that basically holds it with friction. You then have your little clip, goes in, do one loop, and then this will slide up against the back of the pedal. Just like that. And then you can adjust this by moving this forward or back, or moving your clip up to it, and that allows you to adjust the pitch of the pedal where you want it. Or if you move your foot bar forward or back, you can then change the pitch of the pedal there as well. You will run your line through, and you'll put one loop on it like that. It's just a loop knot. Here's what I usually do. I take that, just fold it over, and then I literally just tie an old-fashioned knot, just like that. Put your line through it. Snug it up a little bit, and the same thing again. Just a very simple knot to kind of hold it in place. You don't want to go crazy on that because if you need to adjust it, because you have two different people in the back during the 340 or any other long race or short race, you want to be able to adjust it easily. And then this holds the pedals in place so they don't flop forward on you and you don't have your feet on the pedals. On a lot of boats, this one's a three person. 
so we attach this to the third seat. Some of the boats have a carrying thwart. You can hook it to that, or you can just hook it to the gunnel wherever you want using your little black clips and your screws again. After you're done, grab a little torch or a little lighter and burn your ends just so they don't fray out on you. Just to make it a little bit nicer. Now, when you're transporting this, we have a couple of different things. If you're just local and you're going from your house to the local lake, it's just a little short distance, we do this little transport pin. Goes in here. So when it's upside down on your car, this rudder blade is just flopping all over the place. And the pin goes up in this little holder when you're not using it. Now, if you're going a long ways, like Kansas City to Jeff City, and you're going to be on the interstate for a while, we tell people to remove this. Remove this, which this is a quarter inch bolt, so it's a 7 16 on a wrench or you can two, use two vice grips. Put it together so you don't lose anything. And then there's a bungee that comes with it that you put in there, which we didn't have installed for this video. But the bungee goes just like this. The knot on the bottom goes through here. And then it goes back up in the other side and you tie a knot over here just like the opposite side. Okay, so the reason to pull this out, if you don't and you travel down the interstate, this happens. It literally puts forces on it that it's not used to because you're going 65 miles an hour and it rips the bottom bracket off the boat because it's just too much weight upside down flopping around in the wind. Uh, we got a video on a Minnesota 2 as well. Um, they're a little bit uh, easier just because of the design of them. But uh, we can pretty much put it on anything you got.